All right, we're on section 1.5 today, and in section 1.5 we're going to talk about uh, basically story problems, something we've done for a long time, but something that not many of us like very much. Um, story problems are going to become very important to us this year, and I want to spend some time working on them because um, that, that's where everything's going. Obviously, to know how to do something as um, a story problem, that's that's real world. That's that makes sense. It, you know, nobody is going to come to you the, to you on the street and pose a you know regular eight plus five minus four problem. You know, generally you're going to have you know I bought so many products and and they were this cost at this percentage off and those types of things. So story problems. That's real world. That's that's stuff we're going to focus on. When we talk about verbal model. It's just putting in something in words before you put it into symbols. Um, when we say this is a verbal model of it, it's it's essentially a story problem. That's what we're talking about. Okay. Here we go. We got a bus travels at an average of 55 miles per hour. The distance between Chicago and San Francisco. Those of you who don't know where Chicago or San Francisco are, here you go. Here's your map. Here's here's us right here. Here's Chicago. Here's San Francisco. 55 miles an hour all the way through all this area and they're telling us oh, oh, oh there we go get that out of the way and they're telling us that that is about 2130 miles away how long would it take for a bus to travel from Chicago to San Francisco so that that's a verbal model that that's words asking us what you know what do you how are we gonna figure that out so we're going to use the distance formula for distance traveled as a verbal model. The total distance that I want to travel is 2,130 miles. Okay? And the rate at which I'm traveling is 55 miles per hour, and I want to know my distance in hours, so, or my time in hours. So, 2,130 equals 55t and if I divide both sides by 55 I get 38.7 as my as my amount of time so it's going to take me 38.7 hours to get there now if I want to check that all I have to do is Put this all together so it's 55 miles per hour for 38.7 hours remember when we use the word per that's divided by so it's 35 miles per hour so the hours cancel each other out I'm left with just miles and 55 times 38.7 equals 2130 take a look at the second page here um, the they give us a let's see. They give us a checkpoint to do. It says in example one, how fast is the bus traveling if it takes 22 hours to travel from San Francisco to Colorado Springs? Real quick, on our on our map again, where's Colorado and Colorado Springs? Well, Colorado is right there, right about there. Okay, so Colorado Springs right there in the middle of Colorado hopefully you saw that right where the airplane is there and so we're gonna fit Colorado right in there so the question is let's see what I can do with this the question is how about traveling by bus to about right there from San Francisco so that's a, that's real I mean, you got to know. Somebody says, hey, what, what time are you going to be here? We're all well, we're traveling. How long is it going to take you? Is it going to take you one day, two days, three days? You know, do I have to get a hotel? Where should I get a hotel? That's all, you know, real world stuff. So hopefully you were able to figure out that it takes about, you, you traveled about 60.7 miles per hour. Okay. Don't forget your total distance was 1335. And that would equal x 
how fast you travel, times 22. And so you just divide it both sides by 22. Hopefully you got that. All right. Uh, the table, this next table we have here, let's get rid of all that stuff. This next table that we have here, it says the table shows the height H of a jet airplane T minutes after beginning its descent. Now, when we think about descent, we think about an airplane coming out. Right? So, so how, how many... How high was it off the ground after it starts to descend? If you've ever been on an airplane before, the, the uh, pilot comes on and he says, Attention, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be beginning our descent. Please fasten your seatbelts. And so, what's exactly happening here? Now, what we did was we took all of the heights, 35, 32, 29, 26, and we subtracted to see what the difference was each time. And we see that basically the plane was dropping 3,000 feet per minute, right? Does that make sense? So the height of the airplane after T minutes is what I'm trying to discover right now. So the initial height was 35,000 feet um, minus the, the rate of descent, which we determined was 3,000 feet per T minute. And the question was, find the height of the airplane after nine minutes. So, I already have my equation, 35,000 minus 3,000 T, 35,000 minus 3,000 T. And to figure out after nine minutes, I'm just going to put a nine in there for T. So, if I do nine times 3,000, I get 27,000. So after nine minutes of descending, my plane is still 8,000 feet above the ground. And so again, real, real world problem, kind of thing that, that you'd probably like to know. And our final, our final story problem that we're going to deal with. You want to paint five one foot. This is an actual photo from my daughter Macy's room that I, I painted myself. And uh, let's get some colors that she'd be happy with here. Um, I painted these, these lines in her room, and they're all one foot apart, and I had to tape them and the whole thing. Now, the equation, the problem that we have in our, in our story problem is a little different than this one, but, but I thought it was interesting that I'd been there and done that before. So... We'll get off this pink. Get back to red here. So they want to paint these stripes down the middle that are one foot in length, and they want five of them total. Three, four, five. How much is left in the room if there's 14 feet total? Because then you'll divide it by all of your blank spots and de determine how much, you know, how wide the other parts are. Because that's going to be a major part of what you're doing. Trust me, when I was putting that room together. I had to tape measure out and, and tape and all kinds of stuff. So what I have is one foot strips, one, two, three, four, I have five of those one foot strips. So if I add up all the ones here, I get a five. How many of the X's do I have? Now you have to count them carefully. One, two, three, four, five, six. I have six of those total. So I end up with six X plus five. If I subtract 5 from each side, I get a 9 on one side. 6x equals 9. And then, and then if I get my music going again, uh, if I divide both sides by 6, well, 9 divided by 6 is going to give me 1.5. So now I know that the other stripes are 1.5. So let's go back to Macy's room here. And let's get rid of some of this other stuff. Okay. Um, let's go back to our room. And if I look at these stripes, if what I was trying to do is make these one foot, the pink ones one foot, the yellow ones, then I would have to make 1.5. And so I would have to get my tape measure out and measure 1.5 and one foot, 1.5 and one foot, and put 
what I did is I put little marks on the ceiling and little marks down here right by the by the chair rail and I drew a line from the top down from the top down and I put some tape on that and then I painted the yellow and then I painted the pink so there's there's how I got that one done you go ahead and take a look at the next checkpoint and uh, you have uh, you know give yourself a minute or two to, to figure those out all right hopefully you paused it and you and you actually looked at it and and see what the height was after eight minutes on the first one you got ten thousand four hundred feet and I'll be looking for your work on this tomorrow as you come in I'll be when I'm checking your when I'm checking your paper I'll, I'll look to see if you have work there and number three I also will be looking for your work and you should have two feet I hope you have that okay looks like we're all set thank you very much folks and uh, we will see you tomorrow if you have any questions about this stuff it, trust me this is where it's going we, we will have a major emphasis this year on story problems and how to how to interpret what's you know what do I need what don't I need what information is is nonsensical okay thank you